Hello guys, Game Boy Hub here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing another video that is related to Mac OS. However, this time it is not going to be any older version of Mac OS, we are actually going to be installing the newest Mac OS Sonoma onto an older MacBook. Now, here we have my 2009 polycarbonate white MacBook, and today we're going to be upgrading it with an SSD first, and then we're actually going to be installing the newest version of Mac OS onto the MacBook. And you might be surprised, but it is actually possible to run the newest Mac OS version on these older machines. You can even go as far back as 2007 which is pretty incredible. So yeah, for this, you are gonna need a USB drive. 32 gigs is just enough, but this is a 64 gig drive and I do recommend having a 64 gig drive. You are also going to need another Mac computer in order to run this application right over here, which is called OpenCore Legacy Patcher. And this is the app that we're gonna use to create the installation media for our older MacBook. And this patcher is actually going to make it possible to install the newest OS onto the MacBook because it isn't natively possible. So yeah, today I'm gonna to be doing a full installation guide with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I'm also going to install the software onto the older machine and see how it runs and is it even usable. So yeah, let's get started with the video. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually download OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So let's click on the getting started right here and we'll need to download and build macOS installer. So from this page, we need to grab the app. So just click on this and it will bring us to a brand new GitHub page and we'll need to grab the openCorePatcher.package. So just click on that and I'll just save the package over to my desktop. And the file is about 700 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long to download. So I'll be back when it does. And here we have the open core legacy patcher on our desktop. So let's extract this package. So we'll just need to click continue a few times and then install. And there we go, the installation was successful, so we can now close out of this. And now we can see OpenCore Patcher in our launchpad, so let's launch it. And here is what the app looks like. So the first thing we'll need to click is create macOS installer. And you can either use an existing macOS installer, but I will download it right now. So I'll just click the download option. And we will download macOS Sequoia because that is the newest version of macOS. So just click on the red download button in order to get it. And now we'll need to wait for this to download and I'll be back when it's finished. And after quite a while of downloading, it has finally finished. So now it's asking us if we wanna create macOS installer. We wanna press yes. And now we should have the macOS Sequoia option. So just click on that. And now we will need to plug in our USB. So let's do that right now. There we go, the USB has showed up, so let's search for disks again. And we need to allow it to access our USB. And here is our USB, so you can see that the capacity is 61.5 gigabytes, so we'll just click on that. And then on this prompt, click yes. And now the program will create the macOS install USB for us. So I'll just be patient and I'll be back when this is finished. And after the process has been finished, you will get the successfully created macOS installer prompt. So now we will need to do one more thing for this USB. So just press OK right over here. And now we will need to go into the settings tab right over here. And here where it says host model, you want to change that to the model of your MacBook. Now I will be installing it on my 2009 polycarbonate MacBook, which has a model number of A1181. And that is also known as the MacBook 5,2. So I'll just select that. And I'll also select verbose over here because if anything goes wrong with the installation, I do want to be able to see that error. So I'll just select that. And that is pretty much it. After you selected all of this, you are done with the USB and we can move to our other machine. So we can say goodbye to this slick MacBook Air over here and we can welcome this chonker. So the first thing I will do is install an SSD into this machine because on the built-in hard drive, it will be very slow and painful to use. So I just bought the cheapest 128 gig SSD that I could find locally. And we're gonna be installing that in the machine. 
And here is the SSD out of its box. So now I'll just quickly show you how to install one of these. So first we'll need to remove the battery, which is easily done by using a coin. So we need to turn this thing right over here onto the unlocked position, like so. And the battery just pops out, as you can see. Now we have three Phillips head screws over here. So we'll need to take those out. And after you unscrewing those, you should be able to just slide off this cover like so. And now you can see here you have your RAM modules and here is your hard drive. So we'll need to take out the hard disk. So in order to do that, just pull on the little flap and it should come loose like so. And apparently I already had an SSD in this thing, which I definitely do not remember. I thought it was a hard drive because this thing right now has Windows XP on it. That's interesting. Okay, I guess that's fine. I'll just put in the new SSD and install the OS on there and I'll keep the existing XP installation on here. But that's really weird. I really thought that there was a hard drive in there, but I guess that's useful. Now I have two SSDs that I can use for things. Nice. So on the hard drive, there will be four of these star screws like these ones. Now I have only two on because you don't realistically need four for an SSD. So you will need quite a specific screwdriver for these, but yeah, you can just take them out if you have yours and then you can just slide it out like so and keep this case. And yeah, I'm just using this little TMU magnetic screwdriver and I just used this bit right over here. I think this is called a pentalobe bit, but I'm not entirely sure. And now we can just slide the new SSD into the housing like that and put the screws back in. And after you did that, you can just slide the new SSD back inside of the machine and just push it in there really good. Make sure that it does click in. And now we can also screw this piece of metal back in. And now we are done with the replacement, so we can just snap the battery back in. And we can also lock the mechanism. And that is how you upgrade one of these machines to an SSD. So let's start installing the software now. And here we are in the setup that we're going to be installing macOS Sequoia on. So you can see that we have the installer USB plugged in. I also have the machine plugged in. So we are pretty much ready to power it on and start the installation. So in order to get to this menu over here, you want to press the power button and then spam the alt key. And after you did that, you should get into the boot menu. So here we have the install macOS Sequoia USB. So we just want to press enter to boot into that. Okay, and we get this interesting icon right over here. I don't know why that happens. Hmm, that is pretty interesting. It happened again. Let me see if I did something wrong real quick. Okay, so apparently I skipped a step uh, on my modern MacBook. So what you need to do after selecting your Mac model in the settings right over here. So MacBook 5,2 is selected for me. You want to press return here and then you want to click build and install open core. And now you want to click install to disk. And now make sure that your flash drive is selected right over here. So just select this and then just click on this EFI volume. And now it will install open core over to the flash drive. So this is actually needed in order to get it on unsupported machines. Apparently open core patcher just creates a normal macOS Sequoia install USB. And then you need to install this later in order to get it on unsupported machines, which makes a lot of sense. And after this finishes, we can continue on our old one. Ah, there we go. So now we get the actual open core patcher option. So we want to select that and press enter. And now we actually get the newer boot option that we need to install Sequoia. So just select install macOS Sequoia. And this is what I basically wanted when I selected verbose on the other machines. So you just get like a little rundown of everything that happens. And if an error happens, you will see it here, which is pretty cool. Also, I read online that during the installation, the keyboard and trackpad might not work. So we'll also need to solve that problem as we go, but we'll first see if they work. So yeah, I'll just let this get to the installer and I'll be back when it's finished. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that it is telling us that it is missing the keyboard and mouse right over here. 
because I can't move the cursor anywhere with the trackpad. So I read that you can solve this by just plugging in a USB hub into your laptop. And I'll just write it on screen right now why you need to do that because that is easier for me so I don't explain it. Basically, it has something to do with different types of USB like 3.0 and 2.0. So I have a little Speedlink USB hub right here. So I'll plug that into the other USB port on my MacBook. And I'll also plug in my normal mouse inside of it. And you can see that the error goes away. And now we are actually in the macOS Sequoia installer. So now we can just continue with the install normally. So we'll go into disk utility. So we will need to format our SSD. So let's click on erase right over here. And yeah, the keyboard also doesn't work. So I'll need to plug that in as well. So for the format, we'll select macOS extended journaled. And for the name, I'll just call it Macintosh HD. And now we can just click erase. And that has completed. So we can click done. And now we can go on with the install as normal. I'll click continue right over here. And I also turned off the lights so everything is a bit nicer and moodier. And I'll also click agree to this. We'll select Macintosh HD where we want to install Sequoia and click continue. Okay, and it just errored out. I have no idea why. So let's try that once again. Hmm, and we keep getting this error while trying to install this. So I'm not sure why that happens. I'll just try Googling that right now and we'll see what comes up. Yeah. So here is where everything went terribly wrong. And this video took me a whole 10 days to film just because of this problem. So let me just sum up what I did. I tried reformatting the drive. I tried changing the partitions. I tried doing all kinds of things in disk utility. Nothing worked to fix this error. Then I installed macOS 10.5 on this laptop because that is the only installed disk that I had available. Then I upgraded that to macOS El Capitan and that took me a whole five days just to make a installable, bootable USB with El Capitan. I have no idea why, but I might also make a video on how to do that because I found a method on how to do it on some obscure forum and nobody has ever filmed it. But yeah, I've managed to do that and install El Capitan. And after installing El Capitan, I needed to install a older version of Open Core Legacy Patcher and then make a macOS Monterey bootable USB because some people said that if you install Monterey first with Open core patcher then upgrading to sequoia might work and yeah that took even more days to do i installed monterey i installed the latest version of the patcher i made another sequoia bootable usb and as i said now we are not doing a clean install i'll be installing it onto the mac os monterey hard drive so I'm basically just upgrading the version of Mac OS. So I'm just gonna hope that that works. So we'll agree to the license agreement, select our hard drive and oh my God, we have finally got it to work. So this is where the error was before. And as you can see, now it starts installing Mac OS Sequoia. Oh my God, this took me like seven days to set up. I don't know why it didn't work for my machine, but I guess if you have the same error, this is how you solve it, apparently. Yes, after days and days, it booted. I went along with the installation and here we are in macOS Sequoia. So I thought of giving up so many times during this video, but I finally got this software installed. And I'm also sorry for the lack of uploads in the recent days, but I also had a bunch of things to do for college and I needed to do this. But yeah, we're finally back on track. So let's finish this video. And it is actually the next day again, because that install took like four to five hours, but we are finally inside of macOS Sequoia and everything seems to work absolutely fine. Even the keyboard and the trackpad have started to work. So now I will just go back into the patcher to see all of the post install patches that we need to install. So it should be somewhere on my launch pad. Here it is, open core patcher. This new version of macOS just looks so cool on an older machine like this. 
here we go so let's go to the post install root patch and now it should get everything that we need in order for this to run smoothly yeah right now it's not very smooth and all of the apps take ages to open and also it takes ages to boot it has a bunch of graphical issues and wi-fi issues as well so yeah i'm just gonna hope that installing this patch will fix all of it pretty much and hopefully we can use this normally so let's go ahead and click start root patching and yeah after clicking that root patch button this window took about five minutes to pop up so it definitely needs uh some patching okay we also apparently need to update the open core app i don't know why because i pretty sure we just did that oh no sorry we need to just update the open core version that we have installed so i will install that right now okay install to disk and we'll install it to the ssd to this disk right here okay and we'll be rebooting later after we install the other patches so we can just move this to the side and here it is just root patching the machine right now and the machine has just finished root patching, so let's reboot, hopefully for the last time. And yeah, after applying the root patch, everything does seem a bit more snappy, however, it's not perfect. You can see that it recognizes our MacBook model and it even shows the image here, which I think is really cool. I don't know if Apple did this or did the open core patcher add these older icons to the software. But yeah, it just looks really cool. All of the specs show up here and everything is completely fine uh, as for the performance it works fine as you can see it is fast enough i mean as much as you can expect from these older laptops anyways but i can't help but think that this laptop might have worked better on el capitan which is normal because el capitan runs on here natively and also a bunch of newer apps can't actually run on el capitan but then again i doubt that this old hardware will be able to run any apps that are really demanding so i don't even know why you would need this anyways if not for the uh looks and as for that part it looks great i mean it is just so cool to see this new software run on this old of a hardware i still can't seem to connect to the network i'm not sure if there is an issue with my network but all other devices work fine it just says the wi-fi network could not be joined which is i don't know why that happens really so yeah i guess we are back on ethernet i don't know why it doesn't work on my machine but installing that root patch in theory should solve that issue and your wi-fi should work absolutely normally so yeah if you guys know anything about that you can leave it in the comments because i would like to get wi-fi to work on here but for now ethernet will be just fine i'll just test out how web browsing is on this machine because I doubt any of you guys will want to use anything else on this old hardware. And yeah, even with an SSD, you can see how long Chrome takes to load up there. Also, it is asking us for an update, but I'll not be doing that, thank you. So let's go over to YouTube and just play a video to see how well that runs. And yeah, 480p looks fine. Let's try to bump it up to 1080. And 1080p actually plays absolutely fine, even in full screen. Yeah, everything is pretty slow, and also this isn't a very demanding video that I chose. But it does play pretty consistently, even in 1080p, which is pretty surprising. So yeah, overall, I'm very happy with how this looks. I think it looks very cool. And I think it is very impressive that these older machines are able to run the newest Apple software. But then again, the functionality of this laptop probably would have been much better under El Capitan. So yeah, this video took me a really, really long time to film, over seven days. And the process is supposed to be quite simple and much faster than this, but I don't know why it didn't work on my particular machine. Maybe it has something to do with that this machine in particular is pretty much the oldest that this patcher supports. On newer MacBooks that don't support the newest software, this runs much better. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Also, please check out my Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys in the next video.